What's up, Coach? Coach Mendez here with Championship Hoops. Today, I got another great video for you on how to run a high school basketball practice. This is just part one of a three-part series. And the reason for that is I coach at a small private school, but we have to share a lot of our athletes. So right now in the beginning of the season, I only have five players to work with. I have two that are recovering from injuries, and I have five that are still participating on the football team. I'm hoping there might be somebody out there that may find themselves in this type of situation where they don't have a lot of players to work with, but I just want you to know you can still have a very effective practice. Before we even get into that, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video and turn on all notifications. But let's not waste any time and let's get right into this. Let's go over some basics that I think you need to have in place prior to even running a basketball practice. So the first thing is you want to have a pre-practice meeting with your players. Now I usually do this at half court. I just put my players on one side of the floor and we just have a quick conversation of what we're going over today and just kind of setting the tone for what's coming. My second basic is use the clock. You know, you need to make sure you're using a clock that way you have a tempo to your practice and there's movement and there's not a lot of downtime. Our third basic is managers. Utilize your managers. I just mentioned the clock. I always have a manager running my clock. When they get there, they're taking out equipment. They're getting everything ready that we need to use for that day. Our fourth basic is utilize your assistant coaches. Don't just bring guys to practice. Um, you know, assistant coaches is a whole different, a whole other topic. But what I'll say about them is you need to utilize them in the best way possible. You need to give them responsibility. You need to give them a, a role on this team. That way it creates buy-in for those assistant coaches. They want to be there and they want to do well. And it's only going to make your program a lot better. So I'm a huge believer that whatever you do first in practice is going to set the tone for the rest of the time. And it's really going to also create the identity of who you are. So the first thing we start with in my practices is defense first. And the first thing we do is we go over defensive fundamentals. So that's going to be things like your slides, your closeouts, how to trap people or walling up on offensive players whenever they're shooting or they pick up their dribble. So the next part of the defensive practice is your defense breakdown drills. And this is a huge step that I think some coaches may skip from time to time, but it's not nothing you want to look past. So what are these things during this time period? Uh, it's going to be more like your shell drill. Um, it's going to be going over rotations, whether you're in a man or a zone defense. And it's also going to be making sure you go over your transition defense. I can't reinforce that enough. And on my team, no matter what, we're going to make sure we practice our transition defense every day. is going to be the defensive competition stuff and the things that we usually do are we'll play some one-on-one -on -one, maybe some three-on-three -three, and also five-on-five -five. but we're going to do certain things with those competitions and what I mean by that is like sometimes we'll do things where you got to get three in a row where the only time you can win the drill is when you get three, de three defensive stops in a row 
or we can do the change drill. Um, if you haven't seen that, that's gonna be exclusively on my Patreon, so you can go ahead and see that drill there. And then it's also a good time when you're in competition to go over your undebatables. So what are your undebatables? Well, for our team, our very first undebatable is we're gonna contest every single shot. Um, our second one is communication. Our third one is we're gonna dive on loose balls. There's certain things that build our identity that have to happen whenever we're on defense. So whenever we compete, if one of those things doesn't happen, then we're just gonna get on the baseline and we're gonna have to run for it. So after our defensive competition stuff, we're gonna move right into our offensive skill development. And when we do this, we're gonna be make, making sure that we work on our dribbling, our finishing, our pivots, and our passing. I can't stress how important this is for your team. There are certain times where we just come in and just do offensive skill development. Please, 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 I don't care how long your practices are or how many kids you have, always work on offensive skill development whenever you're working with kids and teaching them basketball. So after we go over some offensive skill development, one phase in practice that we're always going to do is we're going to focus on shooting. I think that's a big part of our success, and the game has changed so much that if you have players on the floor that can't knock down open threes, it's going to be detrimental to your team and their success. So one thing we always work on shooting-wise is set shooting. The second thing we do is break down shooting. And what I mean by that is, what type of shots are the kids going to get within your offense? The third one is transition shooting, how we sprint the floor. We like to sprint to the corners. Um, we like to hit trailers. So that is a phase of shooting that we're gonna work on every day. The next phase of our offensive practice is we're going to work on offensive breakdown drills. And what I mean by that is we're going to run breakdown drills for the actions that happen within our offense. So for instance, I run a dribble drive offense and we, we have an action called a kickback. So what I'll do is I'll put one minute on the clock, my players will work through that kickback action, get an easy layup, and they'll get about five to six reps. So if you run like a read and react offense, one of the things with that offense is you have to pass and cut to the basket. So something you could do is put one minute on the clock, pass the ball to the wing, do a straight line cut to the basket, get it back and make a layup. But this is an important part of breaking down your offense that I feel some people may skip. You need to make sure that you're showing your players how to get the ball within your offense and score. And running through these actions and these breakdown drills is the way to teach them. The second part of this is, this is where you want to go over sets, baseline out-of-bounds plays, and sideline out-of-bounds plays. As the year goes on, we'll keep adding more and more plays to our offense, and you'll see that we'll be able to run through six or seven different situations within two minutes.
the last phase of our offensive practice is going to be our offensive competition. And here's where we'll work a lot of one-on-one -on -one things, three-on-three, -three, and our five-on-five -five stuff. And we'll do that by playing these little side games. But what everything is going to do together is it's going to put our kids in situations where they have to make reads. And I can't stress that enough. Whenever you go through certain offensive competition drills, put your kids in situations where they got to make reads so they know what to do in the game. You can't expect a player to get into a basketball game and not know, not know what to do when he stops in a certain area on the floor, when the ball gets penetrated. This is the opportunity for you to teach those reads during your offensive competition stuff. The last thing I want to leave you with, Coach, is this is the format that I'm always going to use. I do know that during different phases of the practices, you are going to have to practice different things, but this is just the foundation of how we run an effective practice. Something else I want to leave you with is at the beginning of the year, my practices are two hours long. And you might think, man, you just showed me a lot of stuff on that board. However, as the season goes on, our practices get shorter and shorter. We get to about an hour and a half to almost an hour and 15 minutes. And we, we are still able to go through every single phase that I just showed you on the board. You just want to make sure that you're dedicating the appropriate amount of time to each phase of the practice. I appreciate you for watching, Coach. Please don't forget to turn on all notifications, like, comment, and subscribe.